What's up, everybody? Welcome to In Love With Horror. My name is AJ. And I'm Christy. And yo, this is our spoiler-free review for the upcoming Hulu film, Mr. Crockett. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what this film is, uh, it is written and directed by uh, Brandon Espy. Of course, this is a, well, his debut feature film, but it's based off the short that he, that he did. I don't believe, I don't remember what year it was. 2022, but, I believe. Yeah, okay. It was part of the Hulu's Bite Size uh, Halloween series. Neither one of us have, have seen that short. Mm-hmm. So this was our, you know, first introduction, introduction right, to, <laughs> to Mr. Crockett in this world. Uh, but the film is about... Uh, uh, a mother and uh, a son, a uh, mother played by uh, Jerrica uh, Hinton and uh, the son major played by Aiden Gavin. And they recently, um, you know, just lost the father of the, of, uh, of the family, her husband. And now she's dealing with, you know, her son yeah, having a lot of emotional distress from that. Right. Uh, and, you know, lo and behold, they get this random ass mailbox that pops up. It's got these tapes of Mr. Crockett's world. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden, Mr. Crockett can, you know, come out of the TV and grab kids and pull them into his world. And she's got to try to find a way to get him back. And that's kind of the the gist of, of this film. I mean, we'll, we'll walk right into, like, just going off the top, how we felt about this film. You want to go first? You go first. You want me to go first this time? Okay, hey, we switch it up this time, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, like I said, I think the key thing here is this is our first introduction to this. Like, I have no clue what it was. Uh, I don't even know if I had saw the trailer for this. Uh, I think I just saw, like, the poster and the, the description of it when we, you know, we're going to check out this film as part of, uh, was this, were we, were you check this one out right? as part of Fantastic Fest, right? Yeah, so uh, I had no clue what it was. Uh, we, uh, we watched this part of Fantastic mm-hmm. Fest, right? Uh, and I got to say, like, this is one of those ones that surprised me because, off the bat, when I saw the poster that it was a you know Hulu original film, you know you know how I be feeling about streaming originals. Like I'm always, you know, going in with being cautious. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times the, the straight to streaming movies be real hit or miss. So I didn't really know what to expect from this, and boy was I pleasantly surprised. Cause I think this movie is dope. Like this is a really good, uh, fun horror film. You know. Uh, the Mr. Crockett's world angle, you know, really, well, for one, and I didn't mention this, the film takes place in the nineties, right? So it's got a lot of the nineties nostalgia, you know, embedded in this. So for a lot of, uh, you know, us folk that grew up on things like, uh, any type of like show like this, Mr. Rogers neighborhood, uh, Barney, Barney. uh, yeah. anything, go go Island, you name it, anything Gullah that's got Gullah this kind of like, you know what I'm saying? About like, show. you know, uh, you know, main yeah. presenter character and it's like meant for kids. Uh, I like how it plays on on that angle, right? And because when I was a kid, right, there's this Barney episode where uh, they were like camping or in the forest or something like that. And they went to the forest and all of a sudden there's like owl <laughs> dude in pajamas or something like came from the side and the kids like freaked out and was scared. That scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> so, you know, like it, it's got this, you know, this like, you know, kids show vibe to it and um, it, man, I'm telling y'all right now, like it's just a really cool concept from, you know, the the moral moral dilemma element of you know why Mr. Crockett is doing what he's doing. Uh, I really like that that element, the special effects, so the different like creature designs and the gore and all that stuff is there. Um, uh, and it's the overall story. I like how it was told, how it was presented. Um, and this is just a like it's just a it's just a it's an engaging and fun and creepy film. And it's even got a little comedy sprinkled in. And I think the big thing here too is, you know, it's a black horror movie. You know what I'm saying? And one thing that I really liked about this was um, there wasn't any like extreme like tropes. This wasn't like a, oh, we're walking into like a, you know, some broken ass family. Like it felt very like normal for a change, which was, I you know, I really welcome because we would like to see more of that type of stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, this, this was just, uh, a surprising film that I thought worked really well. Like everything meshed together really good. Uh, and I want to see more of the Mr. Crockett for sure. <laughs> like, I feel like he's got Mr. the potential. Mr. Crockett returns. Hey, look, Mr. Crockett two. got that potential to be like one of those like horror icons. Obviously this film has a lot of inspiration from things like Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff like that. Even from 
the opening scenes and all that type of stuff. So the inspirations are there. Uh, but now I'm like a fan. Like uh, even from the songs that they play, the, the whole world they dead. built with the sets for the Mr. Crockett's world. Like this shit feels like it was a real show. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's what I think. I, I can keep going, but I want you to get, make sure you, <laughs> well, I, I turn it over to you to, you know, add in and, that's you know, funny. Uh, speak to some other stuff. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely enjoyed it as well. Mm -hmm. I thought it was super um, fun. Like you said, it was engaging from yeah. the opening sequence. Like that opening was all crazy. That is a strong opening. A very strong opening. I love, I love when a horror movie has a really good opening because you're yeah. like, oh, oh. This it, this is what we it definitely for. hooks you. It hooks the fuck um, out of you. And I love Elvis Nolasco as Mr. Crockett. Like, yes, he is diabolical and charming at the same time. He's yeah. got that face and that smile. That's like, wait a minute, are you, are you smiling because you're nice or you're smiling right. because you're, this, you're this evil? The, <laughs> real demonic type, yeah, uh, vibe behind it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But he does a really good job in this in this role. I thought he was like on par, like perfect as yeah. this character, Mr. Crockett. Um, but yeah, so I, I I don't know how deep you want to go into this, but I mean, overall, overarching, I, I enjoyed it. And mm -hmm. like, kind of like how you mentioned about this being a black horror film, and um, even though there are some like small dynamics, like especially like the opening sequence, yeah, that are a little bit like. Oh, yeah, well, I get it. I, the purpose behind it, but, right? I, but see, when you, I've experienced some of those elements. Yeah. Maybe not that extreme. Oh, well, yeah. You know, so like a lot of it, I'm like. Like eating your food and stuff like that. This shit, yeah. real life. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it definitely hits on par yeah. with the the dynamics of black families of those times. Right. Um, yep. And we're coming off of certain films in recent weeks. That mm -hmm. feature black characters, black families that have a lot of traumatic stuff in them. Right. Um, so this was refreshing to me. Right. Um, to have like a black cast, primarily a black cast, um, black characters and black stories featured in a horror film without those things. Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Um actually have an article that I'm working on that has that that is based on that. Because we do need more of these types of films oh, yeah, in, I agree. in black horror. So that was really refreshing. Yeah. Um, now, the mom character in this one, because Mr. Crockett has this has this mission, right, to save these children from homes that he deems as like bad. Problematic. Yep. Like bad for the kids. Bad for the kids. You know, like thinking abusive households, things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, and so seeing uh the way his, his, I guess, desire to save these kids has kind of like been warped to not just like save kids from things, but maybe kids who aren't being mistreated really, but just aren't like, you know, like, oh, you got to go to bed at eight o'clock. And I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy with that. Yeah. So, oh, well, I can give you mm. all night. You get to stay up. You know what I'm saying? So like, because the mom in this one is not actually a bad mom. She's just mm -hmm. going through a rough time, yep. which is like you mentioned, she just lost her husband and she's dealing with a lot. Like yeah. that's a big transition when you unexpectedly leave, lose someone in that way who is your partner in life. Yeah. And now you're left to parent this child alone. And, and speaking to that parenting piece, I really like how they showcase the struggles of parenting in general. So, you know, like it, it was showing like. Just trying to raise a kid, and right. like, yeah, uh, there was some of the even we could relate. We were to like, that. yeah, like, okay, this. I feel her on this. Oh uh, yeah, we feel you on that one. <laughs> like, I do all this shit for you. Like, yeah, da, da, da. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, girl. Yeah, we do do all that shit. Exactly. Shit. So that yeah. was really good. Um, also, there's another layer to this. So uh, we there's another parent that we encounter um, early in the film that kind of like loops in later on in the film. And she has like this weird like connection with Mr. Crockett, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought that was really cool, like yep. th the way they util uh, utilize that connection. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a semi twist, I guess, that isn't really a twist because you kind of well, I did. I caught it early. You didn't catch it as early, but I mean, eventually I, yeah. you figured it out. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what's gonna be. Yeah, and I um, think that was intentional. Like I think it was purposely done. I don't think it was. Meant to be super surprising. No, I don't think it was meant to be surprising yeah. either. 
Um, but I do feel like nowadays in a lot of, um, of films, things are kind of like, you know, displayed out on the table for you. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like he had to do that in this case. Oh, like make it so obvious. obvious. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. exactly. Um, and then you brought this up because of another v- review you looked into, right? Like the there's a lot of exposition mm-hmm. in the film. But I don't think that exposition was absolutely necessary because I think SB and Reed, however they wrote this, I think it actually was well done to the point where it wasn't needed. I felt like we kind of already f- figured it out or mm-hmm. understood um, the villain in this case and kind of already uncovered all those pieces and put yep. together the story. I thought they did that very well. So by the time that we get to this area where this exposition is, it wasn't really needed to me. Yeah, I disagree. I actually really like the exposition. I don't know why. Normally, You liked the way it was displayed. Yeah, I like the way it was presented. Presented, um, yeah. But it didn't even but like it didn't bother me. You know what I'm saying? Like uh like I wouldn't want it taken out the movie. Like for me, I'd want it kept in. Because I, I liked how it was explained and all that type of stuff. Like I don't know, I liked it. I I, I know what you liked. I don't because yeah. I'm we're trying not to give away spoilers. Right. Which I think is a little bit difficult. Yeah. Talking it's about be this hard. particular yeah. piece. Um I'm not saying that that presentation wasn't cool because I thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. I just think maybe certain elements of that exposition didn't need to be included because that was it took up a good chunk of that particular. Yeah, it did take up a decent amount of time. Yeah. So some of that stuff, I feel like, oh, we've already kind of like figured that stuff out already. We could have just highlighted some of the story. You know what I'm saying? So you just like saying shorten it down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I can agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm cool with that. (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, um, I'm trying to think of other points I might wanted to make in regards to it. But I do, like you said, you did like the world. Yeah, the the world was cool. That was really cool. Um, There were elements that kind of did remind me of other shows. Uh, for example, Teletubbies. I don't know if you remember Teletubbies or not. Yeah, that's sun. But they had the sun in the sky. Mm-hmm. So this one was kind of like a flip on that. Yep. Um, and then like the, you know, the puppets and stuff like that. All that stuff was super cool. Yeah, they did have some cool puppetry. Yeah. yeah so now we cool. didn't cover, we covered Fantastic Fest remotely. But if people got to go to Fantastic Fest, I'll try to get the images because we had them in our email. But they actually had like the the blue puppet Oh, that's cool. there and stuff like that's that. People cool. got to, you know, hug them and take pictures with them and stuff like that's that. Super so cool. that is super cool. So, um, but yeah, those were really neat. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of like relation, relation, relatability between you mentioned Freddy Krueger and Mr. Crockett. Just like mm-hmm. some of the things that they said, like some, like the vulgarness of their language. Yeah. And, like the almost like comedic. Yeah. Like, dialogue that they use while yeah. also being sinister right yeah, it exactly. was very in line with like a freddy cooper style <laughs> i thought that was uh funny. there was there was he did say some funny shit in the movie there was like, some funny yeah, stuff like, and then he was still really like good. smiling he's still you know? smiling like <laughs> that's not how we do that <laughs> like yeah yeah and it, so i thought that was all good it was man it was excellent yeah like i'm gonna tell y'all like this man when we was because i don't i can't remember like what movies we had watched uh, like in the la- in the in the days leading up to when we watched Mr. Crockett, but we had watched some like ones that were like okay or mm-hmm. like you know nothing that was like really like hitting to me. And oh, so, we're talking about Fantastic Fest movies, just in general. Oh, okay. like I, I, even outside of Fantastic Fest, I'm talking about just in our lives, this, mm-hmm. the shit we was just watching generally. Yeah, whether it be Fantastic Fest or not, like there was nothing that was really hitting. But then we finally played this. I think I even said while we were yeah. watching it, I turned you. I was like, oh. This is a good one. It was. Like, I was like, I like this. Yeah. yeah. Like this, man, like this felt like refreshing and like mm-hmm. exciting, you know, felt like unique. And new. Yeah. yeah. And original. It felt original. I did. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I, and I'm not saying like there hasn't been movies that have done similar things. Right. And, yeah. But like the way this is packaged all together from uh, the black cast to the 90s nostalgia and all those things. Uh, you know the Freddy Krueger style dude, but it's a you know this you know this black Mister Rogers type character. Mm-hmm. Like all those elements was so unique that I was like, this is just a refreshingly dope ass horror movie. Yeah. Like I, I really like, and you know how I am. Like I'm not a big like rewatcher unless I really like something. Yeah, and like 
this is a movie that I would oh, not yeah. mind throwing on. Definitely like it's definitely like a rewatchable one. movie. It's even mm-hmm. one of those ones where like you could throw on like you know at any point and like this could be like you, you might go to sleep type movie. Mm-hmm. You know where you just don't want something to have a good time. Like see the little like you know quips and things like that. Yeah. Uh, this 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 has that ability. When I think about like Nightmare on Elm Street, when I think about some of my favorite moments from the franchise and the different little you know Freddy quips, mm-hmm. these quips ain't on that level. Right, but, but like, there's moments that are ones. right that the sequences play out in that way where they're like ingrained in my mind now that I can vividly remember yeah. how those kill sequences like played out and how his demeanor was shifting between. The, right. the character will yeah. also be in this like demonic ass person, yeah, this, you know, entity or whatever. But yeah, I I would think we should uh, probably schedule a spoiler discussion for this one because I yeah. still have a whole lot I feel like I have to say, but I can't because it would be spoiler. Yeah, yeah, because you don't want to give away uh, too much, and mm-hmm. I feel like even some of the stuff I, we've already said, I feel like it's kind of teetering uh, along that. Yeah, line. I know. Yeah. Um, but just to wrap up this review, uh, what yep. rating uh, would you give it? Ooh. <laughs> I am somewhere between ooh, three and a half and four. Probably four. Out of five. Yes, four out of five. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Four out yeah. of five. Um because uh, when I was like fresh off it and I was like really high on it, I was about to go four and a half. But then as I kind of like set with mm-hmm. a little bit, um, you know, there there are some like minor things yeah. uh, with it that could have been, you know, done a little bit differently. Like mm-hmm. even decision points, uh, yes, that that could have just been written in slightly different. Cause, you know, I, 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 I like when I watch a movie, I have a hard time like just accepting like, <laughs> well, look, they just got to do it this way because the movie got to play out that way. Like, <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, but it's still stupid as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like to see it. You yeah. Know? Uh. So, but yeah, I think if, I think four is really good for this one. This is one yeah. that. You know, as people are building out their, um, you know, October movie marathon list. Add it to your this, list. Yeah, yes. this is one this is good. that y'all need to put on your list. Like, For sure. I'm telling y'all, y'all going to enjoy this one. October 11th on Hulu. This is one that is a must-see for everybody. And I'm hopeful that we get another uh entry in the Mr. Yeah, Crocker world. Funny. And they, I, don't, I mean, shit, keep it running and then have fun with the titles. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do yeah. all like, like, like how, oh, kind of like Street how is. back in the day. Oh, okay. That's what you meant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Like having like that kind of fun. With mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. Um, but this definitely matches like the, even when I think about like video games, like that poppy, poppy playtime yeah, shit and stuff like that. Yeah, that's definitely in like, that Like this vein. is in that arena, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this definitely fits right in with those types of things yeah. uh, in terms of vibes, Five Nights at Freddy, all that shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I even said that to you. I was like, man, Five Nights at Freddy's should have been like this movie where I honestly feel like a kid could watch this. Not yeah. like, a, not like I, a small kid. Right, right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? An older kid could definitely yeah. watch this. And, There's a and good balance it. in this one between like the horror and still having a, like a, like a little bit of like the playfulness right. and um, fantastical worlds yep. type stuff. So it's still... Could be like you said, like a Five Nights at Freddy's type. Yeah, and I'd even like if uh, Universal somehow for Five Nights at Freddy's, the next one could maybe have a version that's <laughs> in line with this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because the the kills in this are pretty good. They're good. Yeah. Oh man, they're the effects is on point. The yeah. kills are dope, y'all. Yeah. Uh, but look, that's what we think about Mr. Crockett again. That's coming to Hulu on October 11th. We definitely recommend y'all check this one out. If you've seen this movie already, maybe you got a chance to see it in Fantastic Fest. Drop down in the comments. How did you feel about Mr. Crockett? Are you as high on it as we are? Maybe you're not. Maybe there's some things you didn't like. Drop all your thoughts down in the comments below, y'all. And as always, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel because we got a lot more content coming. Already, we've dropped uh, our The Substance review. And that's kind of like one of them hot take reviews that people ain't going to really fuck with probably like that. But <laughs> we don't care because we don't bandwagon. We give you the real deal over here on In Love With Horror. So go, t- go check out that review because I'm interested to see what y'all would think about it. Uh, we got our From Season 3 Episode 1 reaction that's up. We'll be reacting to that whole season, y'all. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because uh, Episode 2 coming out uh, Sunday. Season. So you know the reaction and review is coming. Then, of course, we got October coming up, y'all. So you got to subscribe to join in on the discussion on all things horror. we see you in the next one. Peace.